start the recording. I'm um, also going to add a Facebook Live. Let me see if I can get this going. Oh, now it's saying something's not happening. It was all good to go until I'm ready to go. Now, okay. um, I might have to skip that one. So Sheila, we were just sharing that we've got two manifestors on the call and mm -hmm. I'm a projector. Do you know what you are? Yes, manifesting generator. Manifesting Whoa. generator. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Another manifestor type. Well, Neato. Kind of, sort of, not really. Not, <laughs> cold, not totally. She's a generator first. Yes. You know, people, because it says manifesting generator, they think, oh, I'm a manifest. No. Oh, no. First. So we will talk no. about that. Okay, well, that's not happening. All right, so that doesn't want to participate. That's fine. All right, so let's get started. Welcome, everyone. I had the idea a couple weeks ago that there needs to be a human design meetup group. And I already have an astrology meetup group, so I can have, I think, two other meetups under that same umbrella. Um, so my astrology one is called Learn Western Astrology. I've had that going for many years, even when I was in Orange County. And uh, that's the third Wednesday of every month at 7 p.m. Tucson time. And then this is the fourth Tuesday of each month. It'll be at 6 o'clock. Tucson time, which right now is the same as Pacific time. Mm -hmm. I love that, that Arizona doesn't have time zone changes, but everybody else does. So. <laughs> I, I loved it when I was there too. Yeah. And I finally it's learned nice. which is which. It's the winter that's different. I finally, finally learned that after how many years? <laughs> right. Yeah. I love though my body doesn't have to change and yes. I like the whole hour ahead and back and that's Absolute. just craziness. And Sheila, where are you located? I'm in two back. Okay. So you're oh, Arizona, beautiful. Just mm -hmm. south of Tucson, Laura. Beautiful. Uh, and Laura Debbie? is Orange County. Yes. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Tell me your astrology. You said the third Wednesday? Yes. Okay. At, at 7 p.m. It's called Learn Western Astrology. Got it. Thank you. Great. And I'm a Leo, by the way. Okay. So Sagittarius. A Leo, a Leo and a projector, I love to give advice. <laughs> but as a projector, I have to wait until I'm invited, which I'm learning. Which isn't easy for a Leo. It is not. <laughs> because I think I know. And I want to tell you all about it. So, as I've gotten older, I've learned to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> oh, we uh, the hard way. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Well, the uh, what's called the not self for a projector is bitterness. Mm -hmm. So if I've not entered into something correctly or if I'm giving advice and it's not received well because somebody didn't ask me my opinion <laughs> or ask for my guidance, I get bitter. And I've, yeah. I've learned how to recognize that sooner rather than later. That's great. So that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good thing. So let's just go around if you want to um, share like how you got into human design um, they call it living your experiment. Um, how deep into it? Are you just scratching the surface? Is it something you think about on a regular basis? How familiar are you? Let's just take everyone's pulse. I'll start. In 2006, I was at a uh, the Goddess Center of Orange County. And it was like a psychic fair or something like that. And I had just uh, started reading astrology professionally in 2006. I just felt proficient enough to be able to charge people that I didn't know money to do readings. And somebody at the psychic fair said, oh, are you familiar with human design? And I said, no. And uh, she said, well, let me do your chart. And like she went to her car. I don't know if she had a computer out there or what, but she came back. She goes, oh, you're a projector. You're here to learn new systems. And I'm like, oh my God, great. That's all I need. It's like, I'm just now getting good at astrology. I don't want to take on a whole nother system to learn. But then I found out that that's what projectors do. <laughs> to uh, master systems so that we can guide other people and manage their energy. 
Um, so at first I was turned off by the whole wait for the invitation thing. I thought that's BS, I own a business. What am I supposed to do? Just sit around and wait for people to contact me. Um, so I kind of put it off and it didn't really resonate with me. Plus in 2006, there wasn't a lot online. Um, I didn't get a professional reading until 2015, and that was to figure out what's called PHS, or determination. That's not what to eat, but how you eat. So I couldn't find that on my own online, so I actually paid for a, a consult, and that was very beneficial. But mostly I'm self-taught. I don't have any kind of certification. I'm just a projector, and it's what we do. <laughs> So I've been living my experiment, as they say, for 14 years. Okay. So who would like to go next? I will. Okay. I, honestly, I have no idea how I fell into it. I probably saw a reference somewhere on Facebook and thought, huh, what is that? Right. And then just, just uh, Googled did my reading, which really was very, I didn't, First of all, the chart is scary. I didn't know what the <laughs> hell it meant. Um, you know, with all this stuff, it, it, it seems like hooey, but I'm all about experiential learning. And the more I learn about it, the more, hey, I, I'm open to hooey because we used to think the world was flat. Right. And um, so when I first read my report, it, w it was kind of gibberish. I'm like, is this talking about me or is this general? And so it was very confusing. And the gates, I didn't, I didn't get that. But I have, there's a couple in Orange County, Raquel and Davidian, I don't know if you know them, who are very active on YouTube and very active in Facebook. And they give just enough to tantalize you and then they sell things, which is, which is great, but I'm learning a lot through them. Yeah. And now when I read things, I get it. I, I, it, uh, it's, it's becoming more um, familiar, I suppose. As a manifester, I, uh, man, there's things about me as an ego, uh, uh, I can't think of the word, um, the, uh, ego authority. Yeah. There, there are things about me that I've always known, like I'm very self-referenced, very, very. <laughs> yeah. and, and to a point that it's, you know, difficult for other people. And it and how important environment is for me. All of this has been answered, and it's like, oh, good, because mm -hmm. I knew they were like big things about me. Yeah. Um, and uh, I do understand that ego has a different connotation, but I am very self-referenced. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 learning to. I started the path of making decisions from my um, inner knowing a while ago. I think before I discovered my human design um, design, uh, but it's so important that I do not trust my mind mm -hmm. implicitly, mm -hmm. that everything I think is, is up for question. Wonderful. And how long ago were you introduced? You know, Dr. when were you, when were you here, Debbie? When did you come I to my office? In, um, I left in late 2016 and it was okay. a few years before that. Probably 14 then, uh, six years maybe? Could be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Laura. Who else? I can okay. go. Oh, nope, go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead, Sheila. Okay. okay. Um, I don't remember exactly when I was introduced to um, human design, probably about 10 years ago. Uh -huh. I'm from Vermont, where just everybody is a Reiki master, including me, or shaman, <laughs> sound healer. So in my circle of friends of sound healers, Reiki masters, and, uh, and shamans, somebody did human design work. And I found it fascinating when she, uh, she did my chart um, and everything rang true. And I wish so much that I had known about my own children. So I have adult, two adult sons in their 30s. And boy, I would have raised them so differently. One is a reflector. Oh, wow. Other, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my my musician son Shane is a reflector and I would have I was always didn't I just didn't know how to parent him. Now I know. And the other one's a manifesting generator. Okay. So um and then as a I'm a 
um, I was a retired high school environmental science teacher. And I would just every now and then when I wasn't quite sure about a certain student who seemed to be struggling, I would just ask some basic information and do the chart and say, hey, come on over here, take a look at this. What do you think? Oh, wow. And it just helped me to better understand and help them better understand. Because, you know, high school kids, uh, many of them are so lost. Um, I love human design, even though I'm, I really don't know anything about it. I just have my, my, um, my, you know, $17 reading from, <laughs> from online, but, um, but there's something about it that rings so true. Yeah, me too. And I want more. <laughs> yeah. It's addictive. Great. Thanks, Sheila. All right, Shelly. Um, I started, oh, I'd say almost seven years ago uh -huh. and my cousin kept saying, she is who introduced me. Um, I've been a counselor for many years, for many, many years, but a spiritual counselor. So I've been doing an energy work, Reiki, and I do psychic work, and I do child, every, all of the other stuff, Enneagram. I mean, anything I could always get my hands on. <laughs> and she just kept saying, well, you're a manifester. You're a manifester. Well, I know I'm a manifester in my life, but I didn't know you know, once we get this lingo and, and understand it, we view everybody, we could say, well, you're the project, you know, we understand what we're, they understand what they're talking about. I had no idea what she meant. Yeah. And she started to just kind of throw out some things to me. And that was it. I was hooked literally immediately wow. and just jumped right in with her. And she started to train me. Um, and I just, I grokked it very quickly. It, yeah. it resonated with me very, uh -huh. very, very much. And and Debbie, I think, you know, the, the astrology I've been into for years too. And I think that, you know, lends a hand and that, that makes such a difference as well. Mm -hmm. um, and the I Ching I studied for years. So it all resonated. It all made sense. And um, I, I'm addicted. I mean, I, you know, I do it regularly and I did, I do everybody I know's charts and, <laughs> and, you know, look at everybody and know what they are and just right. go, okay. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it becomes so integral, a part of you. It's hard not to. Right. And, um, but, and it, and like you, Laura, I'm, I'm very self-referenced much to a lot of people's chagrin. I know. Um, I'm very, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning though, the beauty All about is, me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's 65 years old. I'm finally learning why some people hate me right away. And some people love me right away. It's right. definitely, it's both <laughs> we're camps, a, right? We're an acquired taste. Yes, without yes. a doubt, without it's a doubt. And I, I, yep. it really is that you too. It, it's yep. the truth. I mean, and yep. I, it's interesting. And so I, you know, I've I've learned when I first started very quickly. When I first started, I just said to my cousin, "Well, if this is what we are, and this is." this is what we are. How do we really, what's the point of it? How do we really change? How do we evolve? And her answer was brilliant. She said, you can know that that's who you are and feel more comfortable knowing it, but that doesn't mean you can't tweak things that you choose to as you go along, you know, that you can make changes. And I know that I've softened. I mean, I know that I don't walk into a room anymore, like, or, you know, like as the manifester can do. I just, yeah, move over. Yeah. And so it's it's been a it's been a real I mean from all the things I've studied this for me has been the most life altering. Wow. That's so great. I love it. Awesome. Love it. Thank you everyone for sharing. I appreciate that. So do you the two manifestors do you understand why some people might be oh, put off by you? Of course. You know, it's all about your aura for everybody. Yep. That's yep. how human design works is the aura. Yep. I'm a yoga teacher as well. And that's where I originally know Laura from. She was one of my yoga students. Oh, I love the aura, it. It's an energy field, right? And it's at least as long as your arms, but some say up to 10 feet around. So whenever you're intermingling your aura with someone else, you're picking up off them and they're picking up off of you. And so a manifestor's aura is said to be repelling, yes. okay? Meaning it is it is all about you because you're the only type that doesn't need to wait. Mm -hmm. You, Shelly, because you're emotionally defined, you do need to wait. Yes. Because you've got to ride your way. But uh, will I learn that I know, in right? the next 65 years? Excuse yes. me, okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe. 
but you do, you can actually think something, inform, and then act. That's your strategy. Like inform and then act. Manifestors tend to not want to inform. They just want to <laughs> act, right? But think about whoever is in your impact zone because you're here to make an impact. Is it's nice, it's polite, it's rude to run over somebody without beeping the horn. You know, just freaking beep the horn. Hey, coming through. <laughs> right? But the order is repelling because yeah. you don't like to be bothered. Like when somebody comes and asks a question, it's it's interrupting your flow. You're in the business yeah. of creating. Because it's all about me. Yes. That's right. Plus, Laura, if you're <laughs> veg, right, which is fire. So fire is also ego-based. <laughs> so, <laughs> double oh, poor husband. Sag. Poor Alfred, yes. Um, now, I, I've, I've been a leader for years and, and, a, and a solid leader. I have a, there's something about my presence that, that lends yeah. itself to that. But deep inside, I was rather insecure personally about myself. So I, I, I guess I make a splash wherever I go with my aura. Yet inside, I felt, you know, like like I wanted to go climb and you know be a potted plant in the corner. <laughs> so it's interesting because it's repelling. But then I felt like I didn't belong there. But I don't think it's because of the repelling. It, it was that seemed internal. Right. Um, now I I I feel much more comfortable in my skin. I I I'm definitely softer than I used to be, um, as as um, Shelley said. And um, through leadership, I've learned a lot of skills of just and then and then self leadership and my master's in spiritual psychology. You know, just dealing with this so I'm better. Yeah. Out. Cool. Laura, you know who else is a manifester that we know in common? It's Allison. Allison? No yes. kidding. And a lot of people would say that she was kind of off-putting. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I know why. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Okay. So repelling. The, Lovely to have repelling energy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Sheila, as a manifesting generator, you're a generator first. That's the baseline. You've got the sacral center defined. That makes you a generator. And your aura is warm and enveloping. So it's like- you Oh, I can feel it. Oh, Absolutely. Yes. Oh my God. Everything, Everything about, you're just so lovely. Uh, there's loveliness oozing, seriously, <laughs> oozing out of your, your yes. little square. <laughs> you are. Sunlight. Oh, you have thank a radiant you. smile, by the way. Your it's just thing. a whole, it's a whole- it's You're right. <laughs> It's, an it's like a halo. There's like a. <laughs> Ooh. It's a it's human true. design love fest. This is great. Really? Oh, it is. oh. oh so, thank you. I, th I think that's what, um, you know, that's what part of my success as a, as a high school science teacher in, in Vermont, because it was just, I was always like that. Oh, <laughs> love the kids. Love yeah. them. Absolutely. Yeah. And when I was first learning this, of course, as a Leo, I'm going to study myself first, the projector. But since we're here to guide others, we're not about ourselves. We're supposed to be all about the other. So when I <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I started studying it, and there was a friend of mine. He was in a, a kirtan group, and I'd see him when I'd go up to L.A. to uh, the kirtan place. And just his energy, and he was a generator. It was just it was like a warm hug. I'm like, it's like that. That's a generator's mm. more. It's like, they just want to, like a cuddly bear. It's very warm yes. and cuddly. Yes. A projector, on the other hand, we're kind of unusual. We're sort of the aliens, us and the reflectors, the non-energy types. Our aura is one-on-one. -on -one. It doesn't necessarily do well in groups. That doesn't mean I can't speak before a group or be engaged in a group, but our aura is penetrating. Right, it's like mm. an arrow that goes right into what's known as the G center. That's the the tri or the diamond right in the middle of somebody's energy field, and we're able to see things that most people don't. Now, some would call it intuition or psychic or inner knowing, but what I've learned as a projector, unless I'm invited to share what I see, it doesn't go well. Why? Because people <laughs> don't want to be exposed. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like or penetrated, right? Penetrated. Like yeah. penetrating without permission is not fun. 
And yeah. I knew this because I had it happen to me. I was doing some body work and uh, I sort of had a, a pseudonym. I didn't have my real name out there, but this guy came in and he knew everything about me, like the yeah. real me. He did say he was like an internet security person and he got beyond the walls I put up and, and was telling me all this stuff. I felt penetrated. I felt violated. I felt very mm. exposed. It made me very uncomfortable. Wow. And then mm. I found out he was a projector and I'm like, aha, I needed to have that experience. So awesome. I don't do that to other people. <laughs> Penetrating yeah. without permission is called rape, whether it's mm -hmm. full or energetic mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. So that's part mm -hmm. of what allowed me to shut the F up. Mm -hmm. just, just because I see it and I want to mm -hmm. be helpful, if mm -hmm. I'm not invited, it's not good. Just mm -hmm. don't, like let people go and make their mistakes and do what they got to do. And I had to learn the hard way with my family. Because often our family of origin does not recognize us for who mm. we are. My in-laws, like my brother-in-law and my former sister-in-law, they saw me. They get me. My family does not. Interesting. Like, I see, I'm like, oh, I can tell you how your son's going to turn out because you're treating him like this. Well, sure enough. 21 years later, wow, he's that way. Hmm, I wonder, you know. Interesting. But don't ask me. <laughs> you know? Exactly. <laughs> you know, right? No, 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 no. Yes. Yes. I had to get beyond that. So now when I go to see my family in Texas, I just keep my mouth shut. Like they're not asking my advice on anything. They're not asking. None of my business. Mm. So I'm just like, I don't have hardly anything to say except for the surface, mundane, everyday things. Yes. <laughs> So, yeah, it's true. It's an experiment. You know, it's like um, cooking spaghetti. You throw it against the wall and you see what sticks. And I'm going to see how I can share my screen here. I do have a PowerPoint prepared. There it is, share screen. Um, do we have any questions so far just while we're just want to see where we're going and I might have questions. Okay, so I've titled this talk, The Path of Least Resistance, because the whole idea is that the body is supposed to guide. The mind is just the, the computer. The body is the vehicle for the soul. The soul is the passenger. And the idea is that the, the soul is sitting in the back seat of the convertible or the limousine and they're just taking in the view. They're just enjoying the ride. But so many of us, we live our life like white knuckling trying to steer. You remember like at a Six Flags or Disneyland and there's the little cars that are on the track, yeah. you know, and you think you're steering and all that. You're not really, you're on the track. Well, that's us like trying to steer when we're on this track. And if you just sit back, it'll take you where you need to go. Mm -hmm. So we can fight things by trying to figure things out with our mind, or we can just relax, no. be in the flow, and learn how to let the body guide. Because the vehicle knows how to traverse the landscape of the earth plane. It's kind of like the moon rover knows how to get by on the moon, while our body knows how to traverse the earth plane, if we let it. But we got to get out of our own way. So just real quick, the human design system was channeled by a, a Canadian by the name of Ra Uruhu um, in 1987. Over eight days, he was taken over by what he calls the voice. Um, he was living in a well house in Ibiza, Spain, and he thinks that the vapors from this well might have had something to do with it. Um, so anyway, this whole system, which as much as I love astrology and have been involved in astrology my whole life and it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper. Human design does that same thing. You know, it's not just the surface living, it's like deep, deep, deep. How you live, where you live, what you eat, what your motivation is, what your perspective is, those are called the variables. Uh, we'll get to what the main essence of human design is in just a second, but just know that it goes really deep. Um, it's a synthesis of astrology, that's the planets and the nodes, the I Ching, the 64 hexagrams equal to 64 gates in the body graph. Chakras, we used to have what they would call seven centers, now we've mutated 
and are now nine centered. We're still living as if we're seven centered, but we're supposed to be nine, we are nine centered beings now. It's the Kabbalah, which is the body graph layout, and then quantum physics, because it works through a neutrino screen. Um, a body graph is created like astrology, birth date, time, and place. You already know that. The ones on the right, or on the left rather, the red is called the design um, nodes. And those are 84 days or 86 days before you're born. So that's prenatal, that's your body. So that's sort of what we're supposed to be going by is what the body directs us. And then on the right side of your graph is the black and that's called personality. That's at the time of birth, where the planets were in which gates. Um, our uniqueness is derived from the design crystal and the personality crystal meeting in what's called the magnetic monopole, which is the driver, and it's located in the G center. And as a projector, that's what my aura is penetrating. It's going right into that magnetic monopole. Um, and when I have the permission, when I've got the correct invitation, I can sort of take over that mag magnetic monopole and help people guide their life and their energy. Uh, H HD charts out how we're meant to make decisions as ourselves outside of conditioning and outside of our minds. Now our whole society is about conditioning. Our school system, our governments, our families, our cultures, all about homogenization. When a human design is known as the science of differentiation. It's how you're unique. And that's because we've evolved from the seven centered way of being, which is Saturnian. Saturn used to be the limits of what we could see in the known universe. And now that we're nine centered, we're Uranian, which is the next planet out. And Uranus is all about uniqueness. It's the ruler of astrology. It's the ruler of uh, Aquarius. And it's all about how you're a unique individual. And what Ra called our new way of being, our new people, is homo sapien intransitus. That we're transiting to this new energy, this new way of being. Here's an example of a body graph. Everybody already has one, so you know that. Um, this is a picture of Ra. He was a manifester, by the way. And let me just say, when he was in his body, and I would try to watch his videos so because I was teaching myself I just didn't like his energy I felt like he was arrogant and he was an asshole and he was he was repelling right and then I learned that he's a manifester and I'm like well no wonder but then once he died in 2011 I remember it happening I was in Laguna Beach and now all of a sudden I could watch his videos and like I got him but when he was wow. in his body I felt this like resistance wow. Interesting. Right. Interesting. So your type determines your strategy. Each type has a particular strategy. Authority is which of the nine centers is your decision maker. And this is the whole essence of human design. You don't have to know anything else but this. And that's follow your strategy and authority. Like there's a lot of different Facebook groups on human design. I started one for projectors. Um, and in doing so, I was researching. I didn't even know there was all these different groups. There's groups of human design for every type, every authority, like wow. how different types of eating. And there's all kinds of human design groups. And they all say, you know, people are like, what should I do? They're trying to figure things out in their mind. And the old timers always say, S and A, S and A, follow your strategy and authority, which when you're trying to make a decision doesn't always help. But <laughs> that's the basis, right? Is not to make decisions from your mind, but from your body. Whatever is your authority, that's what's helping you to make your decision. And the four types, generators, what I would call pure generators, make up 30% of the population. And the manifesting generator does not have its own type. It's an offset, it's a hybrid of the generators and that's 30% of the population. What makes them a generator is they have a motor connected to the throat. And that's what makes a manifestor is there's a, a throat activation. So the throat chakra is like the um, center of manifestation. We speak things into being, we call it into being. So a generator is gonna have a sacral center defined 
and I'll go back to this other slide. It's this one right here, the red one, second from the bottom. That's the sacral center. And in ch the chakra system, that's our second chakra is the chakra of creation. That's our sexuality. It's how we manifest things in the world. It's We're all creative in some way, but in human design, only the generators and manifesting generators have that sacral center defined. And there are builders, there are doers, like the people that built the pyramids would be the generators. They're the ones that are here to work. Those of us that do not have the sacral center defined, which would be projectors, manifestors, and, and reflectors, aren't necessarily designed to work an eight hour, nine hour, 10 hour day and be healthy, right? It zaps us of our energy because we don't have that generative life force energy. We're borrowing it from other people. Uh, the projectors, that's my group, it's 23% of the population. So a little less than a third of the pop or a fourth of the population are projectors. We're here to guide others and manage their energy, not here to work. Now, when I was introduced to human design and I learned that, I'm like, hallelujah, I'll take that. <laughs> not here to work, yay. <laughs> it doesn't quite work like that, but we're not meant to like be the builder types. Manifestors, I find it strange and interesting that we, out of four people, half of us are manifestors. <laughs> it's only 10% of the population, so you guys are rather rare. Um, no sacral definition, but a motor connected to the throat. The only type that can initiate without waiting. All the other types have to wait for something. We'll get to strategy in a minute, unless you're emotionally defined like Shelly. And then reflectors, which Sheila's son is a reflector, they're special. <laughs> only less than 2% of the population. They are totally white. They don't have any color in their chart. It's they have gates, but no gates connect to other centers, which means that they are here to reflect the health and well-being of their environment. Laura, did you know, um, uh, now I'm blanking on her name. She was a anesthetician at, human, at um, Soul at Home. She was from um, Argentina. Oh, she had blonde hair. Now I'm blanking on her name. Shoot. Ringing a bell slightly. Yeah. yeah. She was a Was reflector. she a reflector? She was a reflector. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of reflectors, by the way, which is very... No kidding. Strange. That's They're unusual, too. Yeah. Very unusual. Yeah. So strategy. Follow your strategy and authority. This comes from your type. For a generator, it's very simple. Way to respond to your sacral response. Okay. And that means it's it, because it doesn't have a motor to the throat, it doesn't have language. It's more of what we would call a gut feeling. And it's an uh-huh or an uh-uh or hmm, neutral, right? Like a, a pull toward or push away, kind of like a magnet pulling toward or pushing away or nothing, right? And so it's easy to get in your head and try to figure things out, but we always need to go back for or generators go back to that sacral response. Uh huh, uh huh. The manifesting generator, they have a five part strategy. So, Sheila, you probably already know this, but it's number one because you're a generator first, wait to respond. Uh huh, uh huh. You'll have language because you have a throat definition. So, it'll be a yes or no. But then, like, because you're the, like the project managers, it's like you see the big picture right away. Yes. Right? So it's wait to respond, revision, repurpose, and then the manifestor part, inform and act. The thing with manifesting generators, and I've lived with several, so I, I've seen this <laughs> in action. Because they see the big picture and they have all this energy, I call them the energizer bunnies, they like to skip steps. They don't want to go A, B, C, D. They want to go A, M, Z, done, what's next? But then they have to go back and repeat the steps because right? they missed something. They're in such a hurry <laughs> to get it done. And one of the steps that manifesting generators tend to skip is the informing, mm -hmm. because they see that as asking permission, and it's not. And this affects <laughs> manifestors too. It is, you're not asking anybody's permission. You're informing whoever is in your impact zone, hey, I'm mm -hmm. going to do this. I'm just letting you know. That's a very important step because what happens once you do manifest something, it's like you're sending ripples of a wave out. 
right? And if somebody is in that impact zone of those waves, it's good for them to know so that they can be prepared. It's just being polite. And then you can go ahead and act. For the projector, it's wait to be invited. Like I said, like our aura is penetrating. So if I'm not invited and it's not the correct invitation, just not all invitations are gonna be correct. I'm emotional, so it means I have to ride my wave and sleep on it. Then that door is open. Now I have access to the energy of the other type, usually generators, but sometimes manifestors too, to be able to guide them on their path. And then the manifestor is in form and then act, hey, I'm coming through, just letting you know. And then the reflector, because they have no definition in their chart, they're here to wait a moon cycle or two. So that's 28, 29 days to maybe two months before they find clarity. Because as the moon moves through all the gates, all the 64 gates, they're gonna feel differently. And so they're not to make big decisions until they feel this completeness of this cycle that they've passed. Mm. And one of the things that, uh, an analogy that I like to use for human design is because our body, body is the vehicle, you can imagine it like a ship. And so it's a lot easier if you point your ship or your boat the way it's supposed to go, right? You create a lot less wake, it takes a lot less energy, but because we're, most of us are living by our conditioning and we're living in our head, it's like we're moving that ship sideways down the waterway and it's going, it's making progress, but it's a whole lot of energy. It's a huge wake, which is karma, and it's a, it causes upset. So the more that we can allow the body to guide, take that path of least resistance, it's moving our ship in the direction that it's supposed to go. And it, I'm not saying it's totally smooth sailing. I mean, that's not life, but it's a lot easier when we point the ship in the direction it's supposed to go. I'm going to pause here for a minute and see if we have any questions or comments on anything we've talked about so far. There's a question around informing that keeps coming in and out, and, and I now I can't grasp it, but it has something to do with, and it's been coming out in and out <laughs> for like weeks recently. Now that I understand the strategy better, or the, author, the strategy, yeah. um, is informing necessary to manifest or is informing necessary to make a smoother path? Is it necessary? I understand if there's an impact zone, but can I manifest without informing? Can you just talk to me about that? You can manifest without informing, definitely. But if it's gonna affect somebody else, then there's gonna be ripples. Rip it, like let's a, say you're a barrier of sorts. Yeah, let's say you you live by yourself in the woods and you are a hermit and you don't have any contact with anybody and you're just in your own environment, there's mm -hmm. nobody to inform. Mm -hmm. And you're welcome to act without informing. But that's not your life. You have a right. partner, you have clients, you have your social group, right? So if you decided to up and move to Europe or Timbuktu or or you're going to go away for two weeks, it's probably a good idea for you to let your people know. Gotcha. Right? It doesn't mean you can't do it, but the informing part is you don't live in a vacuum. Right? If you lived out in the woods by yourself, there's nobody to inform. And so, you know, you don't have to do it, but whoever is going to be touched by your decision, Either way, good, bad, and different, it's just a polite thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, to, to lessen those waves of karma and that wake to inform. And like I said, it's not asking permission. It's just yes, and, and it's about quelling the repulsion. <laughs> right. Okay, gotcha. Thank you for that. You're you welcome. know, it's funny. It took me a long time, Laura, to, to grasp it, only because what you just said, Debbie, it felt like, for me anyway, I don't know, Laura, how you react to this or respond or whatever, or feel. It felt to me when I heard it, it was like, because I came from such control in my life, conditioning, it felt to me like I had to ask permission. It felt like informing meant that I have to get approval. Yep. And, and that really pissed me. I mean, 
I, I couldn't handle it because I was always so controlled yeah. young. And it was like, what do you mean I have to inform? I'm, you know, I know what I'm doing. I, so it was, it was a very odd concept, right? I mean, I could not grasp that concept for a long There's time. There's a lot of resistance from manifestors yes. to manifesting generators to informing because it feels like control. It feels like asking permission. Mother, may I? That yep. isn't it at all. To me, it's not control. It's like one extra step. Remember, yeah. it's all about me. Why? Why should yeah. I need? Why should I need to do anything with anybody? Yeah. <laughs> but isn't that sort of? Isn't that sort of that control? Like I don't want to tell. I, I know what I'm doing, and I don't want yeah, yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. a manifest. But not permission so much as just irritating. Interesting. <laughs> well, yeah. be happy, that's Laura. Great. You only have two things, inform and then act. The manifesting I generator, know. like Sheila, has five. Five steps. She's got five steps to do. Ugh. Oh, Sheila. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, Laura, it was Nalita, Ma Nalita Martello, mm -mm. reflector. She was, uh, we would do a trade. So, but she would say, because she'd worked in several different spas, and because she was a reflector, if the spa was a good one, she would feel healthy and upbeat. Mm. And this, you know, spa usually has a lot of women, and we know how women uh -huh. can be. Uh -huh. And she would reflect that in her health. So Interesting. They're, they're like yeah. little mirrors that reflect back to us. Interesting is right. Okay, good. Thank you, guys. Let's move on. Let's see. Let's Poor see. Sheila having that son. You probably saw yeah. that regularly. Oh yes, and um, and I do even regularly remind him of you know his uh, his strategy uh, because he always he has a hard time. He's a musician, so he does reflect the world through his music. Yeah. And he also he, he bakes bread, which oh, is nice. really delightful. <laughs> That's what he, yeah. Uh, yeah, oh. but um, but he always oh. has to, he does have to find himself among people who are good souls. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know the one thing about a reflector, their aura is said to be Teflon. Like things just bounce off them; they don't stick. For a lot of us, stuff sticks to us, mm -hmm. but their aura is Teflon, so they're just reflecting back. They're not necessarily um, taking it on themselves. Huh. Wherever we have white in our chart, whatever centers are not defined. We're taking in energy from the outside. Mm -hmm. I liken that to, um, let's say your house is right next to somebody else's house and your neighbor, and you have a window open, that would be an open center, an open window, and your neighbor is right outside your window barbecuing or grilling something, and the smoke's coming in your house, yes. right? You don't have the ability to shut the window because you're taking in whatever's in your environment. However, because your body is the house, you can pick up your house and move it. It's not tied to a foundation. You can get out of that person's aura. They say, call it break or space. And then you're not taking in their energy. Their so I'm confused because I thought that because he had no defined um, spaces that he was taking in, everyone else's energy. I didn't realize he was yes. Teflon. He, he is taking it in, but it's also sending it back out. Okay. So let's say if he's oh. um, around people the that are fighting, back. right? Mm -hmm. He's affected by that. Yeah. Right? He's taking it in, but he's also sending it out. Okay. Right? So, yeah. I'm sorry. So interesting. I'm so sorry. Even if, Debbie, even if he is... Um, his design and his personality being even with that if he's got the gates even then he's not really he's still able to teflon right i don't know that much about reflectors because i don't they're think they're rare well, yes they're less than two percent of the population yeah. i think yeah Nita is the only one that i've done readings for i've met them but i haven't necessarily done readings yeah. with them so it's, I haven't had the opportunity to like go in depth and see how it is for them. Yep. Um, but I've read that they're the Teflon ones. I'm like, okay. Interesting. The thing about our open centers, you know, we're taking in where we have definition is we have consistency. Like I have a defined emotional solar plexus. I have a defined ego. I have a defined throat. So I have consistent ways of being in these areas where we have whiteness or openness we're taking it in, but it's also where we're going to school, so to speak. It's where we're here to be wise. 
So I have open head, open ajna, open sacral, open root, open um, spleen. So I'm here to be wise about who uses their energy correctly, who has good ideas, who um, uses their power correctly, right? It's, it's about taking it in and then sending, for me, sending it out in the form of guidance, but not taking it on as myself. Like the spleen is about fears. So when people have a defined spleen and I'm in their uh, aura, I can feel their fears. And before human design, I would think, oh, that's my fear. And then I break auric space and I'm like, oh, I don't have that fear anymore because I'm not mm. in their energy anymore. Mm, interesting. Right? So it's where we're here to be wise. It's where we're here to learn the lessons of life where we don't have consistency. Mm -hmm. All right, authorities. So the big two, strategy and authority. And this is whichever center is your body's guide. If the emotional solar plexus is defined, and I'll point that out on the slide up here, that's this, uh, in this case, the white triangle pointed inward that's on the right side of the graph. If that center is defined, it's automatically the authority. That one trumps all the other authorities. And both Shelly and I have emotional definition. Darn so it. This happens as a wave. Right? So they say we don't want to make decisions when we're at the high of the wave or the low of the wave, but over time that's going to change. So we want to try to wait till we get to the middle to find clarity. So the mantra for the emotional um, definition is no truth in the now. Right? Like I used to want to be spontaneous and impulsive and oh, make these decisions, but it's really, it's for the big things, but it's little things too. It's like, how I feel tonight and how I feel in the morning might be two totally different things because I'm on a different place in my wave. So it's learning how to ride the wave of those emotions. And then the sacral authority, this would be the next in the hierarchy. Um, this would be um, for only generators and manifesting generators. Is that uh-huh, yes, the uh-uh, no, or the hmm, no response. Uh, it's like an on off switch and what you might feel like is a yes right now, later on, it might be a no, right? And here's an example of conditioning. Let's say you make plans to have lunch with your friend on Friday. And when the, the meeting gets made, you, you feel a yes or an uh-huh. Friday comes and your body's saying, don't go, right? But your conditioning says, oh, I, I made plans. I said I would. I'm a person of my word. I got to go. But your body's saying, don't go. <laughs> don't follow your conditioning. Call a person, go, you know what? I'm sorry. I just, I can't make it today. Let's reschedule. Follow your body. Because who knows why? Maybe you would get food poisoning or have an accident on the way or your friend and you might have a fight or, you know, who knows what. But your body knows how to guide you. Our conditioning says, well, I made a commitment. I've got to do it. No. <laughs> If you're getting an uh-uh or a no, don't go, then don't go, right? It's an on-off switch. So always be checking in with that sacral response if it's correct for you or not. Splenic authority is only manifestors and projectors, and it's a really small, it's that very first small, quiet voice, and it only happens once. So you mm -hmm. really, those splenic authorities really need to be tuned in to the, because that's, a, like I said, it's the fear center, so it's, like our reptilian brain trying to keep you safe. The ego authority, that's what Laura is. That's for manifestors and projectors only. You need to hear yourself talk it out. <laughs> you know, whether it's to your husband or to a friend or Laura's a coach. To myself. To yourself, right. It's like yeah, yeah. speaking it out so you can hear yourself talk. Yep. The G center, that, that middle diamond, those are projectors only. The projector has the most variety and the types of authority than any other type and self-projected they have to talk about what's important um, to someone else the mental authority means the projector only has um, head ajna and throat nothing below the throat so they're all up in their head and they need to also speak so that they can hear their words coming out of their own body the lunar authority that's the reflectors that's wait a moon cycle to gain clarity. 
And then the final slide is the five steps to deconditioning. And one, acknowledge your body's innate potential for correctness. Like I said, your body knows how to traverse the landscape of the earth plane. That's what it's here for. It's genetically predisposed to align itself to its correct path, as long as we don't interfere with the process. So genetically predisposed, like there's no doing. Like a lot of times in these Facebook groups, there's like nothing to do. Just let your body do its thing. We always think, oh, I've got, especially, you know, we're taught to be manifestors, all of us. You know, if you, if it's to happen, if it's to be, it's up to me, I got to make it happen. You know, that's our conditioning. Instead, like I was looking for a job. I just found one yesterday, by the way, but I've been off, yay. <laughs> I've been off work for six months. And so I'd kind of look, I'd kind of put some feelers out. I'm like, I'm waiting to see where I'm invited. And I got invited, right? But I wasn't anxious about it. I wasn't worried about it. It helps when you have some money in the bank where I don't have that mm -hmm. you know, root chakra fear of survival. And I'm just like, I'm just letting things unfold and there's not a whole lot that I need to do to let my body do its thing. And number two, thank you. Learn to recognize your inner mental monologue. Your mind will always talk in sentences and often use terms such as should, have to, things like that. So just know that's your mind. Mm -hmm. Go back to your, your body's response, whatever your authority. Number three, bring your conscious awareness to how your body deals with what it finds um, moment to moment. What you go in the now through triggers a response in your body, but you'll miss it if you're in your mind. So you've got to really be tuned in. And it's a practice. You know, like they say, it's an experiment. For me as a yoga teacher, like everything is a practice. You don't get good at down dog until you do a thousand or more down dogs right, or plank, or whatever it is, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. So the more you are able to tune in and listen to your body, the easier it becomes. Um, number four, recognize the way the authority in your body manifests itself inside of you, either by expressing your body's readiness for action or its need to wait in stillness. Um, not everything is worth acting upon. On the other hand, if something is worth acting upon, the right timing for that comes from your inner authority's response. Um, something that I've been doing lately because I'm practicing learning to listen to my body is like I sit at my computer a lot, surfing the internet, and my body will just like go, we're gonna go for a walk. And it'll just like get up and go through. I'm like, okay, I guess we're going for a walk now. Or like one time I was walking in a park at Reed Park and rather than like making this an exercise thing and going around the park and power walking, I'm like, I'm just gonna let my body go where it wants to go. And it wandered off to the duck pond. And there by the duck pond was a friend of mine and her dog. And my body like, took mm -hmm. me right to her, you wow. know? And if I was doing my, I've got an agenda, I'm gonna go get some exercise. I wouldn't have been able to run into my friend, but I've run into her so several good. times out and about. So just, mm -hmm. I let my body, do i'm like okay you want to eat now okay you want to sleep now okay you want to go exercise now okay i'm learning to get out of my head and let it do what it wants to do and then finally number five take the risk to trust your authority no matter what what your body comes up with as a correct response for itself might have nothing to do with what your or someone else's mind thinks <laughs> in that sense trusting your authority is always a leap into the void mm. right because we're so conditioned to follow our conditioning, conditioned to be conditioned. So learning to follow your strategy and trust your authority feels like learning to walk. It can <clears> take <throat> a while as it's tr a trial and error process. Nonetheless, once you'll be there, you will hardly notice yourself doing it. Mm -hmm. Ain't that the truth? Mm -hmm. So what questions yeah, buddy. or comments do we have? <clears throat> What'd you learn today? My comment is about the deepening of the awareness that the, the human design is all about the body, the body wisdom. And I, I don't think I've gotten that until recently. And I like the passenger uh, uh, vis visual. It, it's helpful, but the, the, the body holds the wisdom. Yeah. I, I guess I didn't get that in those words. 
mm -hmm. uh, in, in these six years. So that's, that's really helpful. Yeah, good. Thank you. Because I, I, I've always thought the soul, you know, the soul, the, the body and mind are in service to the soul. Uh-huh. And they, they, are, are. they are. They are. They are. But the, the soul body, is the passenger. Yes, but the body holds a more, um, not worthy, but a, 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 an even more important role in this, in this trinity yes. than I knew. Yeah, right. Good. Maybe organic. Mm -hmm. It is organic. And then when you're studying your chart, your body graph, the lines that are red, that's the design side, that's your body, that's you. It's unconscious. Mm -hmm. Black is conscious because that's at mm -hmm. birth, but that's the personality. That's more mm -hmm. like the facade or the cherry on top. It's not the, the heart of the matter. It's the red mm -hmm. lines. So mm -hmm. like for me uh, as a projector, I'm when I get an invitation, I'm looking for, are they recognizing where I have red in my design? Or are they recognizing something that's black? Interesting. That's more of a perceived thing than who I truly am. Mm. I want somebody that sees me for who I truly am so that I can mm. guide them effectively. Otherwise, mm. I'm going to get projected upon. Mm -hmm. you know, I made the bad guy and all these things. So that's a great, that's a great where point. Where I have the red. Okay, that's great. someone else. What did you get today? What did you learn or comments, questions? I knew a lot, I mean, I know a lot of the background. So for me, it's just, it's wonderful to always hear a different perspective, you know, somebody else teaching it and, and different perspective. And then all of us in the group, that's my great joy is, is sharing, you know, what we're all about and, and seeing each person and sharing, you know, Laura, even you and I being the manifester and we still saw one is control and the other is not in the same, you know, in the same theme. So it's just such a joy for me in that sense, definitely. Great. And Laura and Debbie, you being um, a yoga teacher also, being in the physical. Mm -hmm. So having a, a different um, experience with that, I right. think is also very wonderful. Right, and that was something that I would always say in my yoga class is like, listen to your body. If something doesn't feel right, don't go there. Just because everybody else in the class is doing it doesn't mean you have to do it. If your body says, that's as far as I can go, that's as, that's it. Stop mm -hmm. right there. Ahimsa, the first rule of yoga. Don't hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. Be kind, right? And so many lesson. people have their ego involved. Like, oh, everybody else is touching their toes. I got to touch your toes. And then they get hurt. <laughs> oh, yoga. Oh, ugh. I'm like, that was your ego. Because you didn't listen to your body. So... I've taught yoga for 20 years and been practicing for 40 years. So wow. you know, I get the whole listen to your body part, but as far as guiding the life, that's a whole different story, right? I have a Gemini moon and Mars. So I'm very much in my head. Oh. So, <laughs> all right. And Sheila, do you have anything you want to add to the? Well, yeah. Yes. What you um, clarified for me were, you know, the defined and the um, open centers and I really didn't realize that the open centers meant those were the life lessons. That's very mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. Me either. Yeah. Good stuff. That's why we're here to be wise. We're here to be wise. Cool. All right. Well, I thank you all for joining me, my maiden voyage in my human design meetup group. Yay. It's wonderful. Thank you. So fun. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. So the fourth Tuesday of every month, um, six o'clock. Thank you so much. I'm going to post this onto the, um, the meetup group. There's a discussion tab. So this will be up there probably as a Dropbox link, Dropbox link, I would imagine. So if you want to rewatch it and listen to it again, you're welcome to. I do do readings, by the way, if you're interested in getting a human design reading, I'd love to do that for you when invited. <laughs> <laughs> And um, yeah. hope to see you next time. Thanks, Fabulous. everyone. Fabulous. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Nice to meet you all. Nice Be to meet well. you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.